I'm already having some regret. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cletus and I aim to bring you guys fun, informative and entertaining videos all about knitting. If you find any value in my videos, please consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell. It really helps me a lot. If you follow me over on Instagram, you already know that I love going to my local yarn shop, sitting there, learning from the ladies and having a chat with them. And then one day, one of them turned to me and said, I have all this scrap yarn that I just never use and it's just sitting out in my house. And she asked me, do you want them? And I was like, yeah. So for today's video, I'll be organizing a huge stash of scrap yarn. And along the way, I'll be teaching you guys how to figure out the weight, how many yards you have, and how to organize all your scrap yarn. So without further ado, let me go get the stash. <laughs> I am not kidding. This is heavy. Whoa. I'm already having some regret. So here it is. Look at this huge sash of yarn. Oh my God. I am so intimidated and nervous already. Okay, it looks like that she's already kind of semi-organized them. Like I see, I see a bag of white yarn here. I think these are like more variegated, more colorful yarns. So there are many different ways for you to organize your stash of scraps. You can organize them by color, weight, brand, type, project ideas, fiber, the list, the list is endless and there's no right or wrong way to do it. But for me, I think I'm gonna be organizing them in color first and then also by type. So when I'm looking at the stash from left to right, I would see like a beautiful rainbow, but from top to down, I think I'm gonna organize it from the weight. So starting with the lightest weight to the heaviest weight. Oh my God, I don't even know where to get started. Okay, color, okay, 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 we're starting with color. Oh, look how pretty this one is. Managed to get some of them out, but oh, this is actual nightmares. This is what nightmares are made out of. A few moments later. Okay, so I have one bag done and a hundred thousand more to go. <laughs> Two hour update. I managed to do this so far. Why am I out of breath? I thought things were going so well. And I unwrapped the next bag. Black shimmery lace, it's so beautiful, but how the heck am I gonna undo this? This took me three and a half hours. Woo! All right, it's day two. I didn't get as far as I wanted to yesterday, but I did manage to separate them all out and ball them up nice and neat. And now I put them into color order. But I'm gonna take it one step further and I'm gonna try and make little piles of different classes of weight as well. The tricky thing is, and I'm really nervous about, is the fact that none of these have labels. I mean, like a few of them do, but it's because I'm in Hong Kong right now, and then usually we buy Japanese yarn or Asian yarn, they don't use the same classification system. So it's not like I can just read this label and say, oh, it's DK weight. What am I gonna do? I am going to be using the wraps per inch method, and I will show you how to do that right now. To use the wraps per inch method to figure out the weight of a mystery ball of yarn, you're simply gonna need a pen and your yarn. First, you're gonna wrap the yarn around the pen several times, making sure that it's not too tight and not too loose. So we wanna get rid of these gaps right here and push them nice and snug without overlapping. Then we're gonna take our measuring tape and measure out one inch. So from the edge to one inch, I'm gonna put my finger right here and count all the wraps on this side. For this yarn, we have counted out 14 wraps per inch. And now we're gonna go look at our little conversion chart that I'm gonna put on screen right now. And we can see that 12 to 14 wraps per inch equals DK weight yarn. Now we have figured out that our mystery ball is DK weight. Now, as you can see, I have 
So many balls of yarn here. It will probably take me another day to do it for every single one. So what I've done is I've made this little contraption where I put two rubber bands and I've measured out that the edge of this area to the edge of this area measures out one inch. Hopefully using this little contraption will make the process go a lot faster. Hopefully as I go along throughout the day, I would be able to get used to just looking at a ball of yarn and beginning to tell what weight class it is. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've sorted out the whites and greys and I can't touch that yet because I literally have no space. So I thought I would figure these guys out first, put them into their boxes, and then we'll have more space for the rest of them. So up here we've got our lace weight. These are lace weight mohairs and lace weight cotton, I believe. Then we've got our fingering weight yarns, going into our sport weight yarns, going into our DK weight yarn into just one lonely little worsted and then some Erin right here. We don't have any bulky or super chunky. So now that we have this all separated, I'm going to weigh using this little handy dandy scale to figure out how much of each weight class I have in what color in order to calculate the yardage. Off them on the scale, we have 172 grams. So according to our handy dandy chart that's on the screen right now, a typical Aran weight yarn would have 170 to 200 yards per 100 grams. So here's my little tip for everyone. When they're giving us a range like that, like 170 yards to 200, that's a pretty big range. And you would hate to be knitting halfway through something and realize that you're short. So I would always use the lesser of the range. So I'm gonna pretend that it's 170 yards per 100 grams. So first let's figure out how many yards is in one gram of Aaron weight yarn. So that's 170 divided by 100, which gives us 1.7. So it's 1.7 yards per gram and we have 172 grams. So if we times 1.7 by 172 grams, we have 292.4 yards. There we go. It's as easy as that. Now I'm gonna repeat this process for all the grays and all the whites and I'm gonna be keeping a tally. And here it is, the first two boxes full. These are the whites and beiges and the grays. And not only are they color coordinated, I've also placed the lightest weight levels. This is the lace weight mohair going into fingering, sport, DK, and then everything that's larger than DK. I'm personally not as fussed about keeping them super tidy in weight class versus the color, because when you have a stash this big, with zero labels, no matter what, whenever I pick up a ball of yarn, I will just have to check it all over again. So with the power of editing magic, I'm going to complete this in three, two, one. Did it work? <laughs> so after seven hours of organizing spread across two days, I'm finally done! Woo! To recap my entire process, I started off by dumping out all the yarn onto the floor and then slowly balling them and detangling them. Then I organized the stash by color. After that, I worked out the weight classification for every single one of these yarns using the wraps per inch method. After that, I used a kitchen scale to weigh out every single individual pile that was separated by color and weight. That gave me data for me to calculate the total yardage of each weight classification and in each color. Finally, I was able to put them into their forever homes of these beautiful see-through plastic bins so I can see at a glance what I have in my house. I cannot believe I did all that work, but I'm not done there. During the entire process, I was keeping data and I inputted it into a spreadsheet where I could create charts and graphs so I know exactly how much of what I have. So before I go into the data with you guys, I want you to pause this video and comment down below your guess for the total yardage for this entire stash. So here's my spreadsheet and at the top, you can see this table that has every single piece of data that I collected. It is separated by color and weight class. So for example, if I ever need to know how much pink fingering weight yarn do I have, I can always refer to this chart and see that I have 802.9 yards. Then I extrapolated this data to produce this pie chart, which shows me the color distribution in my stash. As you can see, over half of my stash is comprised of white, beige, gray, or pink, which is awesome because these whites, beiges, and grays are my favorite color to knit with. 
and maybe I'll experiment with some pink. I've never knitted pink before. And on this bar chart, you can see the distribution of the weight class categories in my stash. You can see in the middle here, the most popular weight that I have is DK weight yarn, which really doesn't surprise me because I would say that is the most popular weight class, at least in Hong Kong. Next is followed by sport weight and fingering weight, which is awesome because most of my projects use these three weight classes. And if I ever need anything that's bulky or extra chunky, I can always double up a DK weight yarn. Okay, so now it's time to reveal the final yardage of this entire stash. Have you left your guess down below? Drum roll, please. My entire stash consists of 10,208.95 yards. I'm not gonna do any more math, but can someone please tell me like how many sweaters I can make out of this? <laughs> This is insane. I cannot believe I'm now the proud owner of this stash. Massive thank you to Mrs. Chan from my local yarn shop for gifting me this stash. And thank you guys for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it and found value in this video, please consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell. It really helps me grow my channel. You can click on the screen right now for more of my videos that might interest you. And hopefully I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.